Hello colleagues, my name is Joe Stroll and welcome back to this channel. Today I'm going to make a video presentation having to do with audio quality and visual quality. I'm sitting down, which seems to go against the philosophy about teaching that I've talked about in at least one previous video and will probably be naming in coming videos. However, the reason I'm sitting today is that I'm going to be using my laptop in some point as some sort of a test and I will need to be seated when I'm doing that. So I'm doing essentially all of this seated today. In this video, I'm going to be changing which cameras and which microphones I use and I'll be recording more or less the same thing throughout the entire video and then we can compare the quality of both what we are seeing and what we're hearing and what this might mean for our teaching, particularly when we are pre-recording something. Right now you see me using what is referred to as a lavalier microphone and I'm using my G80 to record this. It has face tracking technology on um, and I'm recording this in what is referred to as 1080p 50 frames, frames per second, which I'll say something more about in a moment. I'm sitting in my kitchen, I have this white background uh, and I have a northern uh, window in the kitchen, which means that I'm mostly getting indirect light coming in. If you were in the southern hemisphere, you would be having a window facing away from the sun towards the south instead. This way there's illumination, but it's not too much illumination. We get a bit of a shadow on one side, but not too much, and I'm more illuminated on the other side. I'll talk more about illumination in another video. So what am I going to be using in my test today? First, I'm going to be using my laptop with built-in microphone and built-in camera. Second, I'm going to take the same laptop and I'm going to plug in a microphone, this same microphone here, and then I will record in Zoom. Third, I'm going to take a standalone webcam which has a microphone built into it and I'm going to mount it on a small tripod. Then I'm going to use this connected to the computer to record on Zoom. Compared to the first two tests, I anticipate that this will be an improvement in both in terms of, of, of uh, quality of video and in other words visual and audio as well. Fourth, I will return to the system camera, the one I'm using now, and I'll be using the camera's optics to record visuals, and I'll be using the camera's built-in microphone to record the audio. This will be recorded on camera. It will be not recorded in Zoom. The camera visual quality will be set to 1080p, which in theory should be the same visual quality as that of the webcam, but we will see. Fifth, same system camera, but now I will be using the lavalier microphone, as I am now, as in test uh, uh, number two, and this will be recorded on camera. And sixth, finally, I will be using the system camera again, but now I will be using a so-called shotgun microphone, which will be mounted on top of the camera, and the recording will be done in the camera. I could make changes in the visual quality uh, in the system camera. I could have higher visual quality than what I'm recording on, but for the moment I'm going to stick with 1080p as it's called or HD video quality and not take video quality to a higher level, at least not in this particular video. So in each test I will add text on the screen using the video editing software afterwards, after I recorded, so that you'll be able to follow the tests more closely. You can see exactly what kind of microphone and what kind of camera I'm using. Then after this, I will discuss with you, although it's only one way, I'll be telling you what I think and maybe calling attention to certain things that you've been seeing and listening to. And you might be able to draw certain conclusions in relation to Zoom, YouTube, pre-recorded videos, uh, and so forth. Also later, I'm going to produce a video in this channel about video settings and sensor sizes, or perhaps more than one video about that, so you have to wait to coming videos for more about that. 
But now let's go to the tests. So this is the first test. I'm recording using Zoom. Here I am using my laptop with a built-in camera and microphone built into uh, the computer. I'm sitting at a bit a distance from the laptop as I would normally do in Zoom. At about uh, 70 centimeters away. Everything between 50, 60 centimeters might be the sort of typical distance of us sitting like this. Uh, when uh, we are video conferencing on Zoom or perhaps when we're teaching our, our students. So 50, 60 centimeters away is the distance from my head to the camera and the approximate distance to the microphone, which is below the screen. Now I'm going to move the laptop a little further away. I'm going to move my head away a bit. <clears throat> this isn't quite doubling the distance, but I'm a little further away. What happens if I look to another, look to the side, and I'm talking? What happens to the microphone? What happens to the microphone quality? I don't really know. We'll have to hear later. Of course, we don't want to lecture looking away from our students. Obviously not. Uh, but there might be certain circumstances that we, by mistake, do that. And then they might be able to hear us. So on to the next test. Test two, I'm using the laptop uh, camera uh, like in test one, but now I have plugged in this microphone. It's located about uh, 15 to 20 centimeters below my chin. So this means that it's picking up the sound much better than when I'm say 50, 60 centimeters away from the computer. Also, the quality of this microphone is probably higher than the quality of the microphone in the laptop. Um, in the previous test, I turned my head to the side and was talking, and I don't know exactly, but what happened to the volume? And of course, uh, on the sound quality, and of course I could turn all the way around. And in this case, the sound is still being recorded because the microphone is always close to my mouth. <clears throat> what we see uh, here is that the audio quality has presumably improved. The visual quality is essentially the same. Um, I can move my, in my seat, as we see, when I'm recording here, which I couldn't do so easily with a laptop my microphone. Um, so in structural uh, setting, in theory, I should be able to move around a little bit while on Zoom, but if I move too far away, and we think about there being a PowerPoint presentation and my tiny head there, if I move too far away, then my head will become even smaller and the students won't see any kind of movement of my hands. What's the point in seeing me at all if they can hardly see me on Zoom? So let's go on to the next test. Okay, this is the third test. Um, I'm using an external webcam mounted on my tripod or my mini tripod that's behind my laptop. Uh, it's much higher than I normally would hide it, have it, therefore I'm looking at it and uh, it might look a little strange on the screen. When we see the visual quality that maybe this is approximately the same or somewhat better than what we could see using the laptop camera, um, but the, vo the volume, the, the audio quality is much better than that which we would get directly from the, uh, from the laptop. And maybe it's on par with the microphone which I had on me in test number two. When it comes to the uh, audio quality, I have it set on 40% of the volume. So that means that there's a lot of potential to be at a distance if necessary and still be able to be picked up quite easily. This is almost a professional grade audio kind of equipment as opposed to many other kinds of webcams. I'm gonna do a separate video at some point about this, uh, about this particular device, a device, this uh, Q2 and 4K from Zoom Corporation, not the same organization that produces the video application that we communicate with each other and with our students.
I've returned to the system camera by Panasonic Lumix G80 that I'm using today. Uh, I'm using the in-built, the built-in microphone in this uh, system camera. Again, just like any kind of uh, microphone which is built into a piece of electronics where that's not the primary purpose, or a laptop, or in this case the system camera, there's a certain distance away that we could use and um, and still that, that we would have pretty good sound quality. Let's see if it's about the same again. Yeah, I'm uh, slightly further away than I was when it came to the uh, laptop. I'm recording everything on camera here into a memory card. I'm recording at 1080p like I was um, with the uh, webcam, the external webcam that I have uh, on it, uh, but one would expect that the quality be better because of all the fantastic optics in the lens um, as opposed to just a typical webcam. This camera was originally released in 2015, I believe, but it probably has superior image quality at 1080p than a webcam from 2021 at 4K, even though the amount of information in 4K would be much higher that would be broadcast because there are many more pixels or many more lines on the screen, so to speak. So, now I'm going to move slightly with the camera still being on. And we can pretend that I was, I had somebody that was interviewing and I was standing behind the camera and talking. In this way, we can see that we could actually film something and narrate what the students are looking at by standing from behind, if we're close enough. So my experience is that sound quality is okay if we are indoors and I'm 50, 60 centimeters away from the camera itself. Could be better, but it's okay. Uh, if I'm filming outdoors, um, as soon as there's any kind of wind, that will be a problem. If there are ambient sounds around, that might distract from um, students hearing my voice. Uh, of course, on the other hand, maybe that was part of the idea. Maybe, maybe the idea was that there were some of the sounds and the visuals behind the speaker, the teacher, um, would be part of the lecture, if that was uh, of an advantage or if that would be helpful in some way or add to the content. So again, this is test number five. I'm uh, still using the system camera, the Panasonic Lumix G80, uh, for relying on the visuals, the image quality, but I have plugged in the lavalier microphone as I have used uh, previously in another test. This is, uh, the model is a so-called Deity, um, strange name, uh, lavalier microphone. And what is meant by a lavalier microphone is that we attach it someplace close to, just below our face, so that it's close to the source of the sound. And as we could see before, when I move around, there's no deterioration in the sound quality. This particular model uh, has a five meter long cable, good for most circumstances for a university instructor pre-recording lectures or Zoom or whatever it would be used, uh, used for. There are wireless lavalier microphones uh, which provide advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantage of here of course is that it's an additional cord but five meters is plenty of length for almost any kind of situation you can imagine. Uh, it has uh, in it a very small battery that fits inside here and it has an incredibly long life. Uh, the manufacturer of the microphone says that it should last at least 100 hours so I think it's unlikely that I would need to replace the battery within a year. Maybe two years would be possible. Uh, and it has a tiny green light lit up, so I know that it's working. If you have a wireless uh, lavalier microphone, then you have to have mounted on top of your camera a device which is receiving the signal and then send and having that then attached through the jack into uh, 
into the microphone input on your camera. And then you have the lavalier microphone. It probably doesn't look like this, maybe with some sort of wind protector or not. Uh, and since there's a radio transmission that's required, it uses a lot more battery. And more than one professional photographer or videographer has produced videos on for YouTube describing certain things. And when they came home, they discovered that the battery was dead and then they have to do it all over again. That's one of the reasons why I'm not so keen to use wireless lavaliers because of the possibility of the sound cutting out. Uh, on the other hand, even a low quality wireless lavalier microphone is probably going to produce superior sound compared to say the microphone on your laptop or the built-in microphone on, in this case, the system camera that I'm using. So with a wireless uh, lavalier, of course it would be possible to go further away than the confines of five meters that I have. You could be 10 meters away as long as you're within sight of the camera. On the other hand, it seems rather unlikely that the majority of people teaching universities, the majority of time, would need to be more than, say, five meters away from their camera. So perhaps it's a bit of overkill. This is test six, the sixth test that I'm carrying out today. Um, I'm still using the same system camera, and this time I have instead of a lavalier microphone, or instead of using the camera's built-in microphones, I am using what is referred to as a shotgun microphone. Actually, it's not specifically for using on cameras, I'm using something else as a shotgun microphone. What I have done is I have mounted a particular kind of microphone on top of the camera and plugged in the audio output from that microphone into the camera. Uh, this is another Zoom Corporation product, not Zoom as in terms of the video uh, software, the video application, but the microphone manufacturer. And this is the uh, Zoom H one N, one of the least expensive semi-professional microphones that one could buy from this kind. Uh, I've set it on 40% uh, just like I did with the other Zoom microphone uh, and if I turn it up to say 60% then my voice becomes very loud and booming so I tend to keep it uh, at 4 or 5, the 40 to 50% setting. Let's take a little closer look at this with another camera. H1N goes into the camera microphone in jack just as in the previous test. You can see the cable labeled going into the camera. Instead of a flash mounted on the top, I have a so-called shock mount that attempts to isolate the microphone from the camera. So noise and vibrations from the camera operations are less likely to be picked up by the microphone. As you can see, I can also put a wind protector on the microphone such a furry addition is often referred to as a dead cat among videographers. So it's been a few hours since my tests and now it's evening. I'm sitting in the room that I use as my home office. I have been using it, repurposed it as the home office during the pandemic. And therefore, because it's evening, perhaps my lighting is not the best. I prefer to use daylight when possible and then augment that with artificial lighting. The light in this uh, video right now seems to be a bit on the yellow or orange or brown side. Um, but short of turning the home office into a home studio, uh, there are certain limitations. Now what can we say about the audio and visual tests uh, that I carried out earlier today? The best sounds came from uh, the system camera with either the shotgun microphone or the lavalier microphone. And the best video visual quality also came from the system camera. The worst came obviously from the laptop and just using the laptop without any microphone or any other kind of webcam other than what was built into the, into the laptop. This is perhaps as one might expect. 
there is a significant jump in quality in terms of both the visual quality, the image quality, and the audio quality when we do almost anything to leave the laptop. A better webcam, better sound with, for example, the lavalier microphone, which I've put on here and using right now. If we have students and colleagues who are visually or hearing impaired, I think we owe it to them, um, either because of camaraderie or that they are students or because of university decisions or legal decisions, um, that we improve our videos in terms of both image quality and auto audio quality. Uh, we need our universities to invest in better equipment than what we have on our laptops, and some of them, of course, have done that. Uh, we need, or we as instructors need to be able to go out and we need to be able to buy the items that we specifically need and have our costs reimbursed. There might be some specific situations where we need to have even better quality um, than what we have in our equipment that we have now. Besides improving audio quality, the advantages of the lavalier are that it primarily picks up my voice and not many other sounds. Uh, I can look away from the camera, as you saw in my test, and the sound quality is retained. Uh, mine, like I have said, has a 5 meter cable, and there are wireless alternatives which can be more flexible in terms of the distance to the camera uh, and so forth. Um, but the, if you're going to use these, you want to make sure that your wireless microphone system, both transmitter and receiver, has a high enough quality and doesn't eat up your batteries too quickly. Generally speaking, a, a uh, wire-based system is going to use relatively little power. Uh, of course, we have the cable, one more cable to have to deal with, the risks of, of damaging the cable or whatever. Um, if your wireless system uh, for microphones uses up your batteries within, say, 10 hours, then the question is how good uh, that kind of system is. You probably want to have um, batteries which last considerably longer. Um, the VLAV batteries, uh, what I'm using right now here, uh, they are rated as lasting about 800 hours. Uh, so you can see perhaps why I went for this solution. Um, also, there's a tendency for them to be somewhat cheaper than equivalent quality uh, wireless microphones, but that can vary on the market and the manufacturer and, and so forth. If we think, assuming that um, I would uh, spend maybe even an outrageous amount of time making pre-recorded videos and other things, say 100 hours in a year, then I wouldn't have to replace the batteries for eight years. <clears throat> um, also, in this, um, I'd like to be able to show it. There it is. It'll be hard to see, but um, you can see here, it sounds like I'm making an advertisement for this. It's hard to see this particular point right here. The little battery box. Um, there's electronics which is supposed to help the microphone recognize what it is being plugged into. Is it a smartphone? It is a laptop? Is it a, a system camera? What is it? And make some sort of slight tweaking in the sound going in uh, into the camera or into the, in, into the laptop to make a better sound quality. So in very much a way, in sense, it's a smart microphone. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I chose that. A shotgun microphone. And again, I showed this before. I've removed it from the mounting. Like this. <clears throat> uh, I'll show a picture of, of a sort of a real shotgun microphone a little bit later. Um, it picks up my voice, but it also picks up those other sounds around it. Uh, it's designed for um, clear stereo use. We see uh, two channels, two microphones going in. Um, 
and that would when you, of course it would also be somewhat better sound quality perhaps than this particular lavalier microphone here so that would be an advantage a disadvantage is that you might get sounds that you don't want to have on the other hand maybe you want to have sounds in the background as part of your educational content suppose i'm outdoors um, holding some sort of uh, lesson lecture other kind of activity I have a pre-recorded lecture. I could be in the streets of a city, I could be and have those sounds, or I could be in nature and there might be in some bird songs or, I don't know, in the distance a waterfall, and that could be some sort of a backdrop, an audio backdrop uh, that I could have. My voice will be the primary sound and then there will be some additional sounds in the background. Um, it's slightly risky to do something like that because maybe those signs will take over and then you have to redo the shoot, but uh, okay, it might be important. Another possibility would be to have a longer cable and to have the shotgun microphone, which is why I chose this unusual model and used it as a shotgun, because then I could mount it between two people at some distance from the camera with a longer cord and then we could both be talking into it and both be filmed if it was going to be some sort of simple interview as opposed to having two microphones. It might not be as good as two, two microphones but uh, a limited budget and so forth and that's what I decided to choose. When it comes to both shotgun microphones and lavender microphones for interchangeable lens system cameras like what I have, there are a number of companies but there are perhaps four at present in early 2021 that seemed to dominate. Um, Rode, which while being an Australian company, tries with its name to make it look as if it was, say, Danish. Uh, so it wouldn't be pronounced Rode. It would be pronounced something like R um, if it was Danish. And then there's Deity, um, again, like the microphone that I chose, uh, Sermonix and Boya. I'm sure there are others. Both Rode and Deity produce smaller shotgun microphones um, and instead of the wind protector that I used there from Zoom, um, if it's a small enough microphone, instead of calling it a dead, dead cat, it's sometimes called a dead kitten. Sorry, that's just the name that some videographers use. Um, and besides the four companies that I mentioned, uh, there are some very interesting niche products that are out there, uh, some of which are quite expensive, produced by other companies. There are also microphone setups where you have two microphones. You could have two wireless uh, transmitters uh, going to the receiver, uh, and so you could have one person interviewed uh, on, say, the left channel and the interviewer on the right channel. Um, there are also sort of uh, mixers where you can mount on the top of, in my case, uh, my system camera, where you could actually have four microphones going in, but that would probably be um, a wired microphone. Uh, but now that starts to sound like we need to have a real studio and people sitting around and being recorded and the microphones uh, and so forth. That sounds like a very ambitious kind of lecture. <clears throat> Um, uh, but personally, I'm not going to go in that direction because I think that I have made quite a bit of a change and improvement in sound quality with what I have. Um, and if I would do something else with, with regard to sound, it would be that I would make a lot of changes in the home office and make it into more of a home studio instead of getting a better microphone. I haven't said very much about the webcam that I use. Um, it could be used for other things. Uh, often musicians might use it uh, to show and also record a simple demo. Uh, and that's where I found out about this. Um, this little device here, and I'm going to do a separate review about this at some point in time. So this uh, Zoom Corporation 2Q2N-4K, it can produce 4K images and film. Uh, and my camera from Panasonic can also produce 4K images and film. But why didn't I choose to do that? Isn't more image quality better? Why? Well, there are several reasons, and we're going to be looking at these images here that are appearing. 
First of all, when you are in Zoom with your students or your colleagues, you should realize that the Zoom technology at present has deliberately set image quality to 100 to has deliberately set image quality to 1080p 1080p that's the term that's used that means that what we see uh, in what the image is that we see that there are 1080 lines of pixels by 1920 columns of pixels we could say <clears throat> um, if you're filming at 4k instead then as you can see the number of available pixels is much higher and in fact the total number of pixels if we multiply the x and y axes uh, is approximately four times higher than 1080p 1080p could uh, we could call it 1k if you wanted to instead <clears throat> Um, so if you decide that you're going to have a webcam which can film in 4K and you're connecting that to Zoom, the end result is that Zoom is going to dumb it down and you won't see all that much difference in quality compared to 1080p. Just think about that. Uh, let's suppose that you're producing edu educational content and you decide to do it at 4K as opposed to 1080p or 1K. Your file size is going to be considerably larger. The video editing software that you use may have to spend a lot more time. Uh, it depends upon how many clips that you're putting together and if you're adding in text like on the side here and, and so forth, uh, the size of the file. Um, so it'll probably, the entire production process, so to speak, will probably take longer. Bigger file sizes mean it takes longer time to upload to the server, where your pre-recorded lecture or whatever is, is stored. Um, students whose internet connection isn't so good probably would prefer a 1080p production as opposed to a 4K production because otherwise there will be so many breaks and the, the quality might deteriorate and the, that kind of uh, experience is not exactly maybe what you want to, to provide. Uh, another reason to perhaps stay with 1080p as opposed to 4K has to do not only with Zoom Corporation, but also has to do with other, um, other internet um, examples of films. If you look at YouTube, the absolutely overwhelming majority of videos on YouTube today, that is to say 2021, are either in 1080p or have lower quality, say 720p. There are 4K videos uh, on YouTube and so forth, but they tend to be at this sufficiently good quality of, of um, 1080p. So at this point, it seems like 1080p is plenty good quality, particularly if it's coming from a system camera with all the great optics that exist with the lenses. And particularly since the sensor size in system cameras are considerably bigger than the one that you would find on a smartphone uh, or on most webcams. Uh, but I'm going to be talking about sensor size and image quality and things like that. Uh, and frames per second when recording and so forth in another coming video. I keep saying this. I'm going to talk more about this in another video. Uh, to finish up this video, uh, I'd like to say a few words about using your smartphone as your camera, as your source of audio and visual material, uh, what you're using to record with. Now, there are some smartphones that have a lot of megapixels. Um, and as I'm going to say in this lecture, I'm going to talk about in the future, the number, the growing numbers of megapixels at some point doesn't necessarily mean that the image is going to be all that much better. In fact, the image quality might increase to such extent that the human eye can't tell the difference. So what's the point? <clears throat> the problem with the smartphone tends to be that the, the sound quality is not very good. Just like with a computer with a built-in microphone, when you've moved about 50 to 70 centimeters away, sound quality deteriorates quickly. 
yes, we can put our smartphone on a speakerphone and maybe we can hear some people in the room, but as you tend to notice, the sound isn't all that great. And again, if we have people that are hearing impaired, we want to try to make to sure that our sound quality is, is reasonably good. So, also, most smartphones, including a cherished iPhone or a Samsung or a Huawei or whatever it is, are not designed for making good sound quality. When we talk in a smartphone and when we listen, the sound the, 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 the frequencies, the high and low end frequencies are removed because that's easier to send a signal, uh, signal through. And that's some of the basic design behind this. Um, you might be able to work around this if you install the right apps. Some people suggest this, uh, but because I'm not so interested in the image quality in a smartphone, I'm not going to go down that road. Uh, you can do that if you want to. There's another reason why I do not use smartphones with the exception of the occasional image that I might take in a video. Um, and I'm going to get to this now. A disadvantage with using a smartphone as your camera is of course that your better camera is located on the back. So the back of your smartphone is going to be facing you and you won't be seeing what the camera is seeing. Or, of course, you could use the front phone, which isn't as good, and then you'd be able to see it. Another problem, of course, is that what happens if it rings and you forgot to turn it off? What happens if your text messages are coming in, pling, 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 and all of this gets recorded while you're using your smartphone? It's bad enough when uh, I forget to turn off those sounds on my smartphone and it's in my bag or someplace that I'm making a recording. Here's an iPhone being used to film and a shotgun microphone added to the setup. And here we see a shotgun microphone on a system camera. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. It might help you to make certain decisions about audio and visual quality and gear. And in that case, I, 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 uh, I have been successful, perhaps. If you'd like this video and you would uh, like to add that to the YouTube algorithm, please consider liking it. Also, please consider letting one or two or more of your colleagues know about the video content. If you think that this might be useful for your colleague and perhaps some of the other videos might be useful, please let that person know or other people know. Finally, for yourself, um, if this was interesting and informative, you can consider subscribing to the channel and hit the bell so you get notifications when there's new content which is uploaded. Thank you for watching. I hope you appreciated it. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next video.